people, ministering to people, blessing people. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to have to come back there and pray for Eileen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, let's get started. Praise the Lord. Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that you love us. And Lord, I just ask that you would just give us revelation of how much you love us and who we are in relationship to you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this now, in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Linda and I have been doing a, just a series on just God loves you. And hopefully you've been getting a little bit of understanding of how much he loves you, you know. And, uh, and uh, anyway... So now I'm getting. Now I get to ask questions, and I, so so I just want to ask some questions. Um, um, number one: Do you want to change, or are you satisfied with your love walk? You know. Now I want you to think about that a little bit before you answer. But you know, um, Proverbs twenty-three and verse seven. I want to turn there real quick, and uh, I just want to I just want to try to give you an idea of I quit that. There we go. Proverbs twenty three verse seven says, "For as he thinks in his heart, so is he." You know, in order to change, you're going to have to have a heart change. You're going to have to change what what's in your heart. Because what you're thinking about will affect what you do around and how you act towards other people. Amen? I'm preaching so good right now. Praise the Lord. Whew! That's a good word. You know, um, God's word is a seed. And that seed, it can change your life. Uh, If you look at Mark, let's go to Mark real quick. And uh, this is Mark chapter 4. Come on. I should have just brought my Bible. Mark chapter 4, verse 17. I'm going to start with 13. And he said to them, Do you not understand this parable? How will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones by the wayside where the word is sown... When they hear, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their hearts. These likewise are the ones sown on stony ground, who when they hear the word, immediately receive it with gladness, and they have no root in themselves, and so endure for only for a time. Afterward, when tribulation or persecution arises for the word's sake, immediately they stumble. Now these are the ones sown on, among thorns. They are the ones who hear the word and the cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, and desires for other things, enter and choke the word, and it becomes unfruitful. But those are the ones sown on good ground, those who hear the word, accept it, and bear fruit. Some 30, some 60, and some 100. You know, I I was talking about how, you know, Sandy wants us to become a disciple, and a disciple is knowing God intimately. And by that understanding of you getting to know God intimately, what happens is He gives you life. And He gives you peace. And He starts affecting your life. He starts changing your life. He starts those seeds, that word starts getting in your heart, and you start changing. I don't know any person besides, well, Jesus, but I don't know any person that if they really will allow God's word to get in there, it will change your life. Period. Now, I just read you a scripture about, you know, some that are falling on the wayside. You know, every person's heart has these four soils in it. Whether or not you understand that, it is true. Every person has a stony heart. They have a glad heart. Sometimes they, then, then the cares of the world or whatever, you know, Satan comes immediately to steal that. Or the gladness one, the one with stony ground, they have no root. Uh... The person that has, they get persecuted or tribulations. And what persecution is, is like, you know, when you're sitting out there and you're you're walking in the Lord and all of a sudden somebody says something 
and you shrink back on, no, this is who I am, and this is why I act this way. You know, I'm not going to be intimidated by you just because, you, you know, and you could see that in the political realm right now, what's going on, you know, seriously. It could be very intimidating by people saying, I'm going to put a lawsuit on you and things like that, whatever. So, all right, let's go on. But the cares of this world, deceitfulness of riches, desire for other things, you know, now I want you to think about that. It, it's like you have to keep going. And, it's, and this is what the Lord spoke to me this morning. The Word has to be the final authority in your life. And I've always wondered, what's, it, what's that mean? And I just love this because He said the desire for other things. You know, sometimes we let other things get in place of the Word. And so you're not going to get that fruit of those things, that 30, 60, and 100 fold. You're not going to get those things that you desire. Those great things where you get to raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out devils. Amen. Amen. You won't get those things. You won't see God bless you with thousands of dollars so you can go give to another ministry. You're thinking, Doug, you're preaching good now. I want to see that. I want to see you blessed, overflowing. Amen. And you know what? I love his word because he said this, and I just love this. He said, I love this, that if you can get that seed in your heart and you tend that seed and you take care of that seed and you hide that in your heart, it will produce. I don't have to worry about the producing part. The Word of God will produce. It's going to do what it says it will do. My job is to get that Word in the heart. There's the work. That's the, that's the issue. And then protecting it. Sowing and just sit there and just, oh, thank you, God, for that word. Thank you, Father, that word is in my heart. And Father, I just thank you that it's going to come forth and it's going to bring forth fruit. Some 30, some 60, and some 100. Amen? You know, Romans 8, 6 says this. It says, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Well, you want life and peace, but you know what? You've got to think about the things of the Spirit. Those things have to be a part of who you are. You want to walk in love, I'm going to guarantee you, you're going to have to spend time with the, the source of that love so that that love can get inside you, so that love can transform you. You know, I said this again. Abraham had to be blessed before he could be a blessing. You have to get to the source and you have to stay with that source and stay there and allow that, allow that, allow that to affect you, to change you. If you don't, you'll be like these people that I just talked about. Three of them did not produce. Only one produced. Now, each of us can change that. Amen, that's a good preach, Doug. Praise God. Each one of us can change that. You know, you can affect change. You know, I love this, and, and everybody's heard this, but, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and thinking you're going to get a different result, that is called insanity. It isn't going to happen. You're not going to get a different result. You're going to get the same result. But if you tweak, you make a change, you will get a different result. Amen. It will change. So, each of you have responsibility to change. It's up to you to do it. Amen? And how? Spending that time with the Word. Amen? Here's what the Word says. I love this. Turn with me to 2 Peter. 2 Peter. <coughs> excuse me. 2 Peter 1. And this is verse 3. And it says this, As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. You know, and I love this. How many of you know that if you plant corn, you're going to get corn? Right? If you plant peas, you're going to get peas. If you plant carnality, you're going to reap carnality. If you plant spirit, 
you're going to reap spirit. Amen? Amen? By planting those seeds of God's word, I'm telling you, it will produce life and peace. Now, but the problem is, is many of us don't understand or have knowledge of what his word says about us or what his promises are. We acknowledge him, but with the, it's not in your heart. And so for a while, you'll, you'll, you'll pursue it, and then you give up. Or you No, do not quit. I can eat a whole elephant, believe it or not, not in one setting, but I'm telling you, I can eat a whole elephant. I can. I figured it out. And I can take him, and I can eat one bite at a time. And I'm telling you, in time, I will get that whole elephant eaten. I can also, if I can move the devil an inch, I can push him a mile. And you know I'm getting that. And I believe this. And this is, this, this is tenacity. This is how you have to, you have to think, you know what? I believe your word and I'm going after this. I want to be loved. I want your love to impact me, to change my life so that I'm loving others and I'm ministering out of that love. Now, we, we have all these things that are given to us that pertain to life and godliness, but you don't have that. It's not in your heart. And you got to get it in your heart. It's got to become revelation to you. And then you'll walk in it, and it'll be powerful for your life. You know, I love this word. Listen to this. I love this word. Multiplied. I love that word. But you're going to have to spend time increasing your knowledge of who he is and who we are in relationship to him. How much he loves you. Those are seeds that need to be planted in your garden. You know, I want each of you to take, a, take um, just for a moment, and I want you to just close your eyes for a second, and I want you to look in your garden. How many of you have this perfect garden? Be honest. See any weeds? See any things you want changed? And what I'm, now you can look at me again. Now those things can be changed. But it's going to take you getting revelation of God's word to change that situation. To change that area. Whatever it is. Amen? You know, I love this. I want to ask you a question. Here we go again. Me and my questions, but I love it. And I'm just going to ask this real easy. How many of you are married? Okay, I got married in 1988. All right? And uh, when I got married with my wife, um, in order for me to know her intimately... I had to spend time with her. What if you never spent time with them? Would you know them? I know her strengths. I know her weaknesses. I know her little intri intricacies, whatever you want to call it. I guess it's that word. But that is the idea behind being a Christian and being a disciple and falling in love with this God who loves you tremendously. And his desires for you. But he just wasn't going to just, it's not just some easy thing. He's just going to poof and there it is. No, it's like he draws you. And he's continually drawing you into relationship with him. And he wants that with you all the time. Seven days a week. Hours and hours. Because I'm telling you, you're not going to get it through just coming to church. Somebody posted this, and it was kind of interesting, but they had this thing made, of, it was full of ping pong balls. And this is like the time you need to spend with God. And then they had another little thing beside it, and it was the hours and time you spend in church. And it was funny, but you looked at it, and you could see the correlation of, well, I'm only in church this much, but then you have all this other time that you need in order to grow. Amen. So I want to encourage you to grow, to change. You know, God's will, God's word can change any situation. Anything that's in your life, God can change it. 
I believe that with all my heart. I believe, I believe in miracles. I believe in that. I believe he can give you a miracle. I believe he's merciful. He can do anything he wants to do as long as he has a vessel to perform through. Amen? I have another question for you. How hard is it when a person pushes your hot button and instead of responding with your emotion, you look to God's word and tell your flesh to shut up? Ouch. Amen. I'm telling you, that happens. It's real. But I want you to know God's word is even over that. And he can work on that. I got one more place I want you to go and I'll, I'll let, turn it over to my lovely wife. But I want to turn to Joshua. And, and this is how you change. If I can find Joshua. Joshua 1. Verse 1, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses, from the wilderness and from Lebanon as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for this people shall... Divide as an inheritance the lands which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded you. Do not turn from it, right hand or the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, and that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then... You will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Now, I want you to understand something. In the Old Testament, they had to do something in order to get something. In the New Testament, Jesus has already performed. But there is still things that you need to do, and that is get revelation of what God has done for you. And that takes meditation of taking the Word and thinking about it over and over and allowing it to get big on it. It's like, it's like uh, getting pregnant with God's word and then birthing that thing into being. Amen? All right. Hallelujah. That was good preaching, wasn't it? Yes, it was oh. great preaching. <laughs> All right. Well, he read the scripture I was going to start with, so we'll just jump from there a minute. But um, I was reading how oh, different... Um, things this week and different stories in the Bible. And, you know, so many times we read these stories and we just think, oh, what great stories and, and kind of amazed at where they were and how they, they did things. And, um, you know, though, but when you take those, those stories and stop and say and look at it, you know, and, and how does that apply to me? How could that affect me? How could that be uh, if I was there? That's taking that word and really meditating on it and putting it to practice in our lives. Um, the story of Joshua is pretty interesting. You know, he must have had and been thinking, you know, he had some really, really big shoes to fill when he came after Moses. All the things that Moses did, and then here Joshua has to take over. You know, I'm sure, he, I mean, he was also wondering, God, how am I going to do this? And many times I've been that place of, God, how, how am I going to get to this place. You know, the Lord has given me some different visions and different things and placed them in my in heart through the years. And I just was like, God, how am I going to do that? How am I going to get there? And, and the word says that we will do greater things as he. How are we going to do that? How's that going to happen? Well, it's that, that time with him, allowing and walking with him. And he's the one that then just changes us effortlessly. It just becomes this 
little things, like, like Doug said, these little changes in our life that become big things. Well, you know, I'm one that tends to like to uh, step back and not really be up front here. Um, I could, I, I'm not totally introverted, but I, I could be in that place if I'm not in a comfortable place or in a familiar setting. I can just fade into the background. That's quite all right with me and sit back and observe. But, you know, um, God had different plans, and that's okay. And he, pushing me and stretching me into to new places. This right here is being one of them. But, you know, the thing is, is that's a continual walk with him. And, you know, sometimes we hit things and, and we have to push a reset button or, or, or in our lives that come along that old things that we just tend to pick back up because they're comfortable. And God wants us to let those things go and to, to not hold on to stuff like that. He wants us to take us to a new place, and in order to do that, those changes and those things have to take place. Um, and I was just thinking about, you know, this part and how do we get there, and it just seems impossible. And I'm sure, you know, with Joshua, it seemed impossible that he was going to be as great as Moses, or I can do this thing like Moses did, you know, but... God is no respecter of person, and that's the same with us. He, it, it's not like he gives a special thing to somebody else. And so many times we tend to look on those outward things like they can really talk or they can really, they had just wonderful words to say or this and that, but yet we haven't seen how much time that they've spent with the Father. And the more we spend with him and the more we allow this, the word to come and, if, and just infiltrate us, the more we're going to look and act like Jesus. And that's what he wants. He has great things and great promises. You know, Joshua had the first five books, and he told about keeping that word in his mouth, like Doug read that scripture, the law and did not let the word depart out of your mouth. They had five books, the books of the law. And we have the whole Bible. We have so many more things that we can take and use, you know, as, as our weapons and our what we need to use to battle we have a lot more ammunition than they did and uh, taking that word and just meditating on it I was just thinking about how meditating is really simply focusing your attention on something to the point that it never leaves your your conscience how do we do that well you know meditating when we worry we are just basically meditating negatively and we tend to really do that well, don't we? A lot of times we can worry. We can be shopping. We can be taking care of the kids. We can make lists. We've got to prepare for meals. There's all these things in our life. We go to work. We have to do all those things. And then come. And we just can think of all these things that we can do. And we can go through our day and accomplish them. And at the same time, we can continue to worry about the things we didn't get done. Or the things that still need to be done. And... But the thing is, it's the same thing in taking that word, taking a scripture. You know, I used to look at the Bible and think it just was very overwhelming. It's just so thick. It's so much information. It's, you know, you look at it and, and um, how are you going to ever get all that in, into you and get it and know it? But it's just by, like Doug said, one bite of that elephant at a time. One scripture, taking that scripture and, and getting to know it and use it in your life. Dwell on it. Think about it as you go out through the day. And you know, sometimes we have to really actively get those negative thoughts out and on purpose take the word and say it and begin thinking on it and focusing on it. You know, um, and music is something that's dear to my heart, so I tend to do a lot of things with, with music and put those, that word in as well. It doesn't replace the word, but it still gives you a uh, that draw to the spirit and, to, and from the Lord that we need. And there's songs out there that have the scripture based words. I used to love David Ingalls. He had his, because they were all scripture songs. And it's a lot of how I remembered a lot of scriptures is by those songs. Um, and you still can get those on Apple. I downloaded them here not too long ago and, and listened to them. Um, but, you know, getting that word down in your heart and making it come alive, 
taking it and saying, this is who I am. This is what God says I am. I am healed. I am whole. I am an overcomer. Taking that word and just putting it in and dwelling on it. Um, you know, when God is con literally in control and we allow him to be in control and we do that, you know, I believe when we really know that and we walk in that, prosperity will just be there. Healing will just be there. All those promises that he has will just begin to show up in our lives because we know him and we know his word and we are in fellowship with him so much that our lives are just kind of saturated with him. And that's where he wants us to be. Um, and then I was reading about, in Second Chronicles 20, about King Jehoshaphat. And when, when he got news that three nations were going to rise up against him, and it seemed pretty much impossible. You know, his life and his, the life of his people looked like the next day were going to be wiped out. That was his report that he got. And the thing is, is I love what he did, is that he made a platform and he stood in front of the people and he raised his hands to God and he called on the Lord. That is where his help came from. Because everything around him looked bleak and, and devastating. There was no hope in it. And he, he reached out to God and, and turned his eyes toward him. And then and a prophet rose up and spoke over and prophesied over him. And he said that uh, you won't even have to fight. In the morning, they assembled and they got up then. But what the, the thing is, is the prophet prophesied over that. But what he did is he took hold of it and believed it. See, we have to take hold that the word is true. And that's our final authority. Not what everything else is telling us, but the word is that authority. And that is the truth. He took hold of it and believed it. That's what we've got to do, that we know that our God is far able to do anything that he says what his word says he is. If we say we're healed, we've got to believe that we are healed and he wants healing for us. If it's prosperity and it's money that you're needing, that God's your source. And God can turn anything around. He can bring money from a, a source that there didn't even seem to be a source. He can bring it. God is able. And he sat there and he prayed and he called out to God. And when the prophet prophesied, he, he took hold of it and believed it. He chose to look to God and to believe his word. And as they got up and assembled in the morning, and they, they had everything around him, and they, they even put the praisers out front. He believed in it so much that he said, we're going to put our singers out front. You know, I'm sure some of those people were wondering, what are we doing? Why are we putting these people out front? But they did. And when they got up over to the hill, I think that is a great thing. They didn't give up. They didn't let go. They believed what he said. They, they went out to battle, believing that God, even if they had to go to battle, that God was going to be there for him and be with him. They went out there and the... the Nations turned, two turned on the other and killed it. And then after that, they turned on each other and killed each other. They came up over the hill and it was all wiped out. There was just corpses everywhere. You know, God took care of it. Now, you know, I know those people that came up to battle had no idea that was going to end up happening, did they? They didn't know that they were going to do all that. They thought they were going to overtake the other and Jehoshaphat and his people. But God knew better. He, he loved Jehoshaphat. He was a faithful man and he protected him. And because, God, because Jehoshaphat chose to look to Jesus, believe on him, he saved him. He will do the same for each one of us. He will save us. He will encamp around us when we need that protection. He will come in and defend you and save you. But you've got to take hold and believe that God will do that for you. You've got to believe that his word is true and it is alive and that it, he will do that for you. How are we going to know that is that we go deeper with him and that we spend that time with him. Take that, 
that word and let it come and sink in. I had several uh, just quick little things that the Lord brought to my remembrance as I was going through this is that, you know, the Lord, we were, yeah, we were staying over here when we first were married. And um, I was woken up in the night and I just had this dream about that Doug and I needed to, um, it, it was just, I don't know, it was just kind of dark. And there were these tornadoes, there was several tornadoes all around when we were here. And we couldn't hardly kind of get to each other. And as we grabbed together and we started to pray, they all disappeared and angels appeared around the property. And uh, he just reminded me that, you know, th that there's just, God has plans and he has things that we are to do. And as we join together in prayer and as we join together in one, that there's, the enemy doesn't have a, a, a foothold. And there's things that, you know, God wants to put and give you visions. He, there's things that God wants to put instill into you. And he, it's taken that time to be able to let that go into your, your spirit. Um, another time was um, just the vision, and we haven't seen it yet, but I believe it and I hold on to it, is that the Lord showed me that there will just be people all in this, I just saw massive people out here at the church. And I just, but it, it, they couldn't fit inside. It just was, as far as you could see, there were people. And we were worried about, which is the funniest thing, we were worried about being able, the projection of, for them to hear and the PA system and everything was, it didn't matter because, see, God spoke to every person and allowed them to hear. And I really believe that there is a move of God that is coming that, that he wants to just pour out on his people. He wants to set people free. There are people that are just driving up to come and get healing. And I believe that in the name of Jesus that that will come to pass. You know, Jehoshaphat had to take hold of what God showed him. And it came to pass. Each one of you have something that God has for your life that you've just got to receive from him. Amen. He loves you and he has great things. His word is true. It is yes and amen. He just wants one word. Don't give up. I just encourage you to don't give up. Because the thing is, so many times I remember my mom used to say, don't give up on a brink of a miracle. And I know it wasn't her that necessarily said that. But don't give up. One word from God is all you need. It might be one impartation of his knowledge or truth or his revelation in your life. A slightest impartation is all you need from God. So don't give up. One thing, take it and hold on to it. Hold on to that word because it will perform what it says it will do. Amen? Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. And Lord, I just, I thank you that you just put the seed down in each one of our hearts, Father. And I just ask you to seal it. That, Father, you just seal that word and let it go deep down in each one of our hearts, Father. How much that you love us and how much you want to move in our lives and in our hearts. And I thank you for that today. In Jesus' name, amen.